In this video, we'll look at the Tweak Synth Panel and learn how to control the inner workings of the synthesizer in Soundtrap. We'll cover several different sections, including oscillators, filters, ADSR envelope, LFOs, and velocity. If you'll remember from previous videos, an oscillator is a device that produces sound using various waveforms. The basic waveforms are these four here, and those are all available in the Soundtrap synthesizer. If we look at the Tweak Synth panel, or the synth controls in Soundtrap, we'll see this. On the far left, you can see the oscillator section with two oscillators and a place to choose your waveform here. So each oscillator can have a different waveform. Then you'll see the mix section where we can control the balance of both oscillators. If the slider is at the very top, you're hearing only oscillator one. If it's at the bottom, you'll hear only oscillator two. And if it's in the middle, you'll hear an even balance of both oscillators. We'll skip the filter section just for a moment and we'll look at the amplitude envelope. So this amplitude envelope controls the amplitude, or the volume, of the sound over time. You have four parameters, attack, decay, sustain, and release. We'll come back to these and look at them in a little more detail in just a minute. Now let's look at the filter tab. So you'll see the filter tab also has ADSR controls, but these are specific to the filter. So it's not the overall volume like this section. These ADSR control how and when the filter operates. Below that, we have the type of filter, so we can choose between different types of filters. We have the cutoff, resonance, envelope, and keyboard tracking controls here. The most important is probably the cutoff. That determines at what point does that frequency change and what is the tonal quality of that filter. Next, we have the LFO section, and we have two LFOs. You can choose the type of LFO, the rate, amount, and what it's controlling right here. You can also have the LFO sync to the Soundtrap project tempo, and you can turn this on and off with this control right here. In the velocity section, we have three controls of gain, cutoff, and envelope, and this basically means how much is the velocity of a given track controlling each of these parameters. And then finally, at the far right, we have gain, which is a final gain control or volume control for the synthesizer. In just a minute, we'll look at this panel inside the studio to help you understand it better. The four main types of filters are high pass, low pass, band pass, and notch filters. A high pass filter looks something like this, and you should notice that the X axis is frequency. The lowest frequencies would be on the far left, the highest frequencies would be on the far right, and this filter, as the name suggests, allows the high frequencies to pass through, but it cuts the low frequencies. Anything on the bottom right of this black line will be able to pass through. Anything to the left will not pass through. This is a low pass filter, which is just the opposite. It allows low frequencies to pass through, so everything on the bottom left would pass through, and anything to the right of that black line would not pass through. Here's a band pass, which is essentially a combination of the two. So it's cutting low frequencies and high frequencies, and you're hearing what's left over in the middle. And then the notch filter is basically the opposite of that. All the lowest frequencies and high frequencies remain, but a specific set of middle frequencies are cut here. The next thing is the ADSR envelope. This includes attack, decay, sustain, and release. The attack is the time taken for the initial increase of level or volume from zero to peak, beginning when the key is pressed. Decay is the time taken for the following rundown from the attack level to the designated sustain level. Basically, once that maximum volume is reached, how quickly does the volume decay? Sustain is the level during the main sequence of the sound's duration until the key is released. And release is the time taken for the level to decay from the sustain level to zero after the key is released. Basically, once I let go of that key, or once that MIDI note is over, how quickly does the sound fade out? LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. And it may sound complicated, but it's quite a simple concept, really. We'll look at these in more detail in the Tweak Synth panel. Velocity in MIDI generally applies to gain, but not necessarily. In this case, with the synthesizer, velocity can control gain, cutoff, and envelope. So now let's look at how we can actually control these parameters and either edit or build our own synthesizers in Soundtrap. So we'll make a new track, and we'll go to Synthesizer. And this is only true for some tracks. Only tracks that are actually synthesizers will have this ability to tweak and to be able to see all these controls. If you go to a sampled instrument, you won't have these same controls. I'm gonna switch to this synth up here and look at some of these controls. So here in the first oscillator, we can see a square wave is selected. 
in the second oscillator, a noise wave is selected and we have the balance set to be mostly oscillator one. So we're mostly hearing a square wave. Let's take a listen really quick to hear what this sounds like. So we're mostly hearing a square wave. A little bit of noise is added in there for effect, and then we're also hearing that passing through the filter. So the filter section includes attack, decay, sustain, and release. But keep in mind, this is ADSR just for the filter. The amplitude envelope right here controls the volume of the overall sound. Right now we have a low pass 24 filter selected, but we could click here to change that to a high pass. Let's hear what that sounds like. So only the high frequencies are passing through, which makes it sound much thinner. Let's keep going. We could look at a band pass filter and let's hear what a band pass filter would sound like. And we'll want to change the cutoff to get a different effect. That's changing what frequencies are affected. And we can keep going. We have peak, low pass, and now we're back to low pass 24. I'd encourage you to watch our filters and automation videos to understand more about cutoff and resonance. Moving along, we have the amplitude envelope. This is where we can control the volume shape or the volume change over time. So in this case, the attack is set really low. So that sound is gonna come on immediately. Listen to what happens if I turn up the attack time. It's gonna make the beginning of those notes sound a little softer and a little less harsh. So when the attack is low, meaning it's very quick, those notes have a more prominent attack. The articulation is a little stronger. If I change the decay, that's gonna change the volume directly after that attack point is reached. So there's a very quick decay. And then I could change the sustain. Let's hear what that, what that sounds like when I change the decay and the sustain like this. And then finally the release means after that note is done, either I let go of that key or the MIDI note has ended, how quickly is that sound going to release? For this, it's probably easier to hear a note played by itself. So I'll let go now. And now that sound has fully faded out. If I change that release time to make it higher, that note is gonna hold on for longer and longer. Watch, I'm gonna play this note and I'll let go. And it's still going, very long release takes a long time for the sound to decay down to zero. And if I turn it all the way down, as soon as I let go of that note, the sound will stop. So I'll hit it and let go and it's done. You're hearing a little bit of reverb uh, because the reverb is applied after that, but the release is the actual signal of that sound, the original signal, how quickly does that fall away? And finally, we have the LFO section right here triangle wave, square, sine, and a few others. And so the LFO is applied to a certain parameter. In this case, it's applied to the mix. So if I wanna change this, I could change this to amplitude, and I'm gonna turn this LFO on, and I'm gonna turn the amount up. So this is gonna make it very obvious what's happening here. If I were to imitate the LFO, I would take a volume knob and I would turn it up and down slowly at a low frequency, a very low frequency, like maybe one or two times per second. But the LFO does that for me. So I could apply the LFO to the pitch of oscillator one in this case. And that's gonna basically make the pitch of oscillator one slowly move up and down according to the LFO. So if I play one note, you'll hear that. And it's very, very slow. I can turn the rate up, which basically turns up how quickly the LFO oscillates.
And the cool thing about an LFO is I can apply it to many different things, either an oscillator, the mix, the filter, or the amplitude. So here in this section of velocity, this basically means how much are the varying velocities of any given track affecting each of these parameters. As I let the MIDI notes play, I'll change these parameters and let you hear how it affects the sound. So hopefully you're starting to understand what all of these knobs do. I highly recommend you get in here and experiment and play with these knobs because that's how you can really learn and get a better understanding of how to craft a sound using a synthesizer. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.